Welcome back to another tutorial. This will be the third one in uh, the series of this painting. I do not know what I am going to name this painting, but I am sure it's going to be something very creative. <clears throat> um, but with that out of the way, uh, I'll start it off with this. Today I am, or at least this video, I'll be working on the landscape. So you see these mountains, I'll be doing that along with the landscape. If I do good on time, so sub 40 minutes, then I'll be done and I'll do all of it, everything. I have my signature and that's wrapped. So it'll be three parts, but I might not be able to do that in time. So I might just do the mountains, a little bit of the land, and that's it. And the next video will be the last one. I'll do the crater. And then sign. I think that's what I'm going to do. But I'll let you have another look at it. Of course, there's a ring here. I'm not going to put a ring there. It's not big enough. And it doesn't have the, like, a good text to go along with it. Sorry if you hear a lot of... Maybe maybe that's the sound. Um, I'm guessing with the mic. It's falling over. Uh, I'll reposition it again. in a way that it will not, or hopefully won't do that. I'll just put on my hood. That should be good. Not for now anyway. So I'll lift this up again. You see the mountains, large fading in, tents will be coming from here. I know that contradicts the lighting here, but I don't care. It is what it is. Um, can keep it like that because I think it's uh, more aesthetically pleasing. Um, that's yeah, that's that intro or explanation I'm going to be doing today out of the way. If you wish to paint alongside me, Bob Ross style, you're more than welcome to do so. If you're here simply to watch or to learn, I do recommend getting a drink, beverage, snack, what have you. Me and myself, I am content. Simply having a can of Dr. Pepper. Um, but some some of you might want something else. So I would advise... Um, this might be a long one. Maybe some toasted pop tarts and uh, a Capri Sun. No more stuff. Uh, or some like juice to go along with it. At the moment it's night. So I wouldn't really recommend that if you're going along with me. Uh, at the same time I'm doing this. Um, but... Yeah, if you want to do that, then that's well. That's my recommendation. Now, on to business. I'm going to move this sketch out of the way so I have space. Now, I will show you my setup as you can't really see most of it. So this is my table. That's the right side. And that's the left side. That's what it looks like. That piece of newspaper is where I have my palette, a makeshift palette. If you have a palette of your own, please use that. But I'm fine using something reusable. Or not reusable, something uh, disposable. Um, <clears throat> that I don't have to clean. Because spray, this spray paint is very difficult to reuse once it's on. So I'll just... It's just better for me not to reuse the paint that's already on. It will just have so many messes. It will congeal. It will mess up the fluidity of it and all. So, no good. So, uh, the texture I want to have with the mountains is a fade-in into the land, which means it's going to be a part of it. It's not just going to be a line in the mountains. I want it to be a part of the land. So that means I'm going to have to have this first. That is exactly what I am going to do. Now, I uh, I don't plan to paint it fully, because this is a good amount of space. I do plan, however, to paint it a little bit with the spray paint. And then just brush in the texture. So I might do that afterwards. There we go. 
Hmm. That's good today, Don. Because this has been um, here to dry for quite some time. So it is very, very dry. The painting, I mean. Eh, that's, yeah, that's straight. Now, pinch this a little bit. There you go. Now, this, I don't really care if this is straight. I just want something below the mountains to draw on. Because the mountains will um, obscure the line if there is any. <clears throat> so, I did have a plan for the land gradient. So, let's see what I wrote. I had um, dark brown red uh, to lighter brown red. Okay. I'm going to switch that up a bit to make it a bit better. Uh, I'm going to have shading over here in this part instead of this. I'm going to mirror it. You see, it was mostly dark over here. I'm going to mirror it over here. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. That would mean I must get my darkest brown, dark walnut satin version. So there wasn't much else. Okay, there we go. Now I'll move my, my brushes out of the way. Over here. Also move my dark pepper. So just in case no spray gets somewhere in it. Do not want to uh, congest the stuff. As I am doing over here, I should move this. That would be a good decision on my part. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to just spray here. I have a little arch in my spray form. Just like that. I want this. That's, that's my line. Good fill. Not too much. I plan to just gloss it and then move with the brush. I did something similar in another painting that I did not make a video on because I did not have the space. It's a very good painting. Um, it's just very unfortunate and I wasn't able to make a video on it. Um, I'm going to get my Kona brown now. My reddish brown. Shake a while. And then spray. Now I don't plan to paint a lot of this because that is where the crater is going to be. Though I will paint some of it just in case I do not cover it. Okay. Now that is done. I will move this over to here. Just like that. There we go. So now I am going to move over to where is it? My chestnut brown, which is a pretty light brown. Actually, now I'll move over to the leather brown and then use a uh, dark red to blend it. Nope, that won't work. Is this it's the leather brown or let me see? It is the leather brown. It's just the valve is not working. Shame. Yeah. Something clogged it. As you can see, it's a bit muddled here. Um, that was unexpected. Okay. I try to push it out there. And I force it to go. Now it's going a little bit, but not enough. Well, that's a shame. Might have to put that one to rest. But still must go on. This will be my light brown. Um, but I also must blend this in with dark red to keep that 
form thing. I'll have a bit lighter brown, uh, lighter red here. Good. It doesn't have to be a perfect gradient because I will just brush over. Remove that. Then this. And there we go. See, looks pretty fine. Um, there I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a little bit of landscape here. So you have your gloss paint to wet here. Your gloss will seep into the paint and make it more fluid, more damp, more wet, if you will. Make it more susceptible to um, ma manipulation. That's exactly what we're going to do. This brush, simple brush, you can use a smaller one for more detail, but I'm not going for that, especially up top. So I'll move here. Doesn't really matter if it is a straight line. Oh. Move this and then have weights over here. And we'll also reveal some of the paint below. But that's it's fine. Now I'm not using my hands to do this like I would water for a very particular reason. Because if I were to do this with my hands, it won't look as uh, brushed up as I am doing it with it. It'll have a different texture. With all the different brushes, I could have more streamy textures. And that's what I'm going for here. I especially want my texture over here. Stroke. Similar to what you would do with water, so I haven't taught that yet, but just like I'm doing back and forth, back and forth, interchanging here, have a little bend, it doesn't have to be straight, it could be waves, thing with this is little sands, not sand dunes, but just sands, little humps and bumps, as it waves through the wind. That wind is yours to create in whatever direction you will it. Just over here, I'm just going to blend the dark to the red. Make it a tad bit more crimson. Oh my goodness. This isn't glossed up enough. Also because there's not a lot of color here. Very gentle. See, I'm barely gripping it on. That's how I can be gentle with this. Okay. Now some of these textures, I will just shade over here a little bit with a dark brown, but we won't get to that yet. And I'll do that after it dries a little bit. So now we have the land, and now I will have some, um, some hints, some tints. Oh, and some almond here. Make it pretty light. Just fine. Okay, here we go. Let's take this and brush. Yes. Just, just 
so. There we go. I just want it a little bit lighter over here. Oh my goodness. I really do hate how this moves. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll blend it in anyway, and it's where my stint, uh, my signature is gonna go, so I don't really care if that gets a little bit muddled. I'm gonna try to arc it here. Now that looks good. It's gonna. There we go. Make it span a bit more. Now I think that looks good. Yeah, this will be covered, of course, this little mound. But I think this covers a pretty decent amount of land. Of course, there'll be a big gap here. But I think it's fine. I'll add a little bit of tint. <sighs> now look at me, I'm just... I'm a perfectionist about these things already. Okay. Now I'm going to have it on the palette. Up here, make it dry again. And then brush. Brush, brush, brush. Over to melt it in. Blend it. Cross each other. There we go. Decent enough. And uh, yeah, that's good. Good game. Okay. Now we have that. And now I'm going to move this. By the way, check the time on my phone to see what, how we're doing on time. Got a feeling that I'll be only be able to do the mountains next. Yeah, I think that's what I'll have to do. And then the last thing will be final touches along with the, the stencil side of things. I'll just put my strings and my hoodie in. And let's get ready. Now, as this uh, the sketch implies, there's going to be a large spiked mountain and then sloped mountains over to the left side. And I'm going to respect that decision of mine. Um, use that. I'll use more of the dark brown for this one. I have dark brown over here. Uh, you probably can't see, but on the bottom left side of the palette or of the newspaper. And I'm going to have a tiny bit of red. Of course, I am also going to use the neon, but only accordingly, as I must. Now, have this brush. See? Not big, not too small. You could use a bigger one, you could use a smaller one. It is just how you like to handle your brushes. I do not have a preference of a particular type of brush. Anything that can uh, withstand spray paint well enough and um, sticks to the handle well. If it could do that, then it is good on in my book. Now see how it's peeled right here? What I talked about in the, uh, the first video of this, where peeling was certainly an issue, that's what I mean. It's peeling right there. Not in planets, but in land. It's not pretty. Let's see if it happened here. Nope, not even a scratch. That's good. That's what I want to see. Put this away. Get any debris out of the way while I still can. And then the first mountain is going to be quite high. It'll be up here. I'm going to move some things so I have a bit more space. Um, put the flashlight over over here. Okay, one, two, and stroke. Just know in your mind's eye where you want this thing. 
in accordingly. If you want, um, if you want to be extra precautious like I am, always paint a bit short and then expand it if necessary. If you want to change it, as you can't really change what's already put down on uh, on the canvas or paper in this case. Okay. I'll say this now if you have not seen the other tutorials of this painting, I do ad heavily advise that you do so, as you have a greater picture of how I got to this point. Not only that, you will uh, be shared with a lot of very useful information about how to make a painting like this. Not just how to, you know, paint canets, but other things as well, like prep and preparing a painting. Any dangers of painting? Any obstacles, uh, stories, what have you? Very interesting things. Things I, I highly recommend you all go and see. Now, uh, the reason why this is a bit lighter, what I'm putting down right now, is there was a little pocket of brown that I laid down when I was making this um, that it seeped into. And you'll realize that spray paint on a newspaper or palette is used up very quickly, very, very quickly. But no matter, just keep reapplying to your palette and to your brush and you will be just okay. I'm going to make uh, the blend in now. Having slope down like this, scooping down into the earth, or rather on top of it. Now there will be some tint on these, but not a lot. And try to cover that line at all costs. Also add a bit of flare on the bottom. A little bit of enclaves, some outcrops, anything that you like to add to your mountain. This is your time to do it. Or at least on the bottom side, anyway. Now we're up on the peaks, and we were we are sliding down. And don't worry about the tips over here. We will reapply those with a low tint. Just and stay parallel with the line at the end. To keep with uh, the geometry of your mountain. Keep going until the space is filled with sloping planes of shaded rock. And then we have this done. Or at least the base coat anyway. Uh, sorry if I kicked that. Next thing up, we're going to have a, a little bit of red. Um, yeah, we'll have a little bit of red. Now we'll have that dark corner. Corner brown. Some, what is this? Clara wine. Um, I'll see what this looks like. If it doesn't look light enough, this should be fine. But if it doesn't, I'll add a bit more. Mm, add a little bit more. The red. A little bit of cranberry. Kind of deviant red in this case. A bit more magenta like. I might just go to colonial red, the shade below the Claria wine red. Let's see. Um, yeah, this is good enough. How do you plan to have a um, neon orange and tan tint to this? Where's the snow? 
So I want something that might match that. In this case, it will just look like simple snow. But when the neon gets turned on, it is severely overwhelmed by the vibrance of the neon, which is what I want. Just like how this is. See, you only see the neon, not the tan. The almond tan is not visible at all. Now go up where you <clears throat> you covered with the down slope earlier with the red and go all the way down to the bottom slopes. Don't try to have a full fill. Try to have some texture in there. Some little outlets, outcrops of the brown that was laid beneath it. Like it is there and here. It adds texture and depth into the mountain. Not just the colors. It shows that there is little places that the sun or the light does not reach. Just make it fade all the way down. Not all the way on the bottom. Just make it fade near it. See, if you look closely, like over here, it's not at that brown spot, but it's getting very close. Here's what you want. Now the tint is part tint and other part color variation of the stone. And <clears throat> you should change it up like I have been doing now to have some, like I said, variation of stone. Of course, some of this mountain will be covered up a tiny bit with the other color, or uh, other mountain, I'm sorry. But we will just cover it up just as easily. I'm just having it this here to have a clear example of how to make the mountain. I have the paint here. Now, once on the brush, or something like this, have it uh, not, but I have a as little paint on the brush as possible. Okay. Now I'll have a little bit more. But you want it to be, what I do, to be missed down a little bit. There you go. Now I know these are the stars, as you can see here, but you can easily just say these are fireflies or little outcrops of radioactive material in the mountain. You can have other reasonings for your mistakes. So there's no perfect painting. Not now anyways. There can always be something that can be improved. Sometimes it doesn't even have to do with the painting itself. Okay. Now I'll have the trail here, up through the top slopes, have it melted down. Again, parallel, just like we did here, parallel down to the mountain side the same direction. Step in to refill. Have a bit more concentration of that orange neon up top. And then continue. On the way into up here. And then down the bottom until it fades. 
try not to focus on this a lot as it is on the bottom. So it will take less priority as it will uh, be realistically less shaded than the other parts. So this is adequate. Maybe this could be a bit more sloped. Now, so is this accordingly? That's good. Come on, get on. There we go. See? The neon is still active. Let's blend in the color here. See? It's all good. Now I'll have a bit more condensity up on the top. As it is the main peak after all. And of course, this will be faded down, blended, and disappear. The battery go out. And I'm gonna need this thing. No, no, it, it's on. One, okay, there we go. See, much more lighter now. One more sweep of the neon, just like to look at it. Now, off to the outline of the mountains. Now that we have this done, I will have the outline of the other mountains. I'm going to count how many there are on the sketch. It will, it will most likely change. One, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In total, counting this one. I might keep that number, or it might be more. Um, we'll, we'll get to it. It's very soon enough. Okay. Brown, red, are melded together. To make the mountain base. Blend it together, swipe a little bit to get some of the excess off. Then, do I need them? Okay. Should I pierce the planet? I'm going to do that. It is in the way. Mm, drop there. Yeah. Now I'm going to make this a bit flatter. Not that flat. There we go. This will be a bit more sloped. And that will carry on more and more and more until it is a different mountain shape altogether. This will start the path. Do the different type of mountain. I'm gonna move the chair a little bit. Okay. A bit more extended here. There we go. And then we will have one more. away over there yeah I think that's good 
good old mountain range. Okay, let's bring this in. And now I'm going to fill in these mountains. This will be tedious work. And I don't really have much conversation to go on. If you want to skip until... Oh, I'm going to check in the back. There we go. It's still on. If you want to skip until I am done filling these, then so be it. I have no quarrel against you if you do so. Um, but I will be doing the exact same thing I did on this mountain. Though, so I won't have a lot of dialogue to share, regrettably. So just be continue t continuing what I've been doing. Maybe in times like these, I'll share a little bit about myself. Um, maybe I'll start with this might be uh, brought up, and if I ever do a Q and A, but if I have ever taken any art classes in this, and no, I'm proud to say I've never taken any art classes. Um, above, I think I already said this. Uh, above elementary school, in my first video. If you haven't seen it in that, if you haven't seen that video, then uh, well, I'm seeing it now. I'm very proud of that fact. A lot of people are surprised when I say that. Um, so I guess I understand if they are or aren't, because art like this is a bit. Um, how do you say it? Uh, diversions. That's. A crude way of saying it has a awful connotation to it, but I suppose you could say that diversion from other art forms. I don't think it's better than any other. It is simply the form that I think I work in best, and maybe that's all there is to it. Maybe that all that matters in painting. If it's a thing that you're good at and you're happy doing. And perhaps it is the best one for you, and it is your best, not in <clears throat> not in total, but uh, not overall, but just your best. Maybe that's fine. Though I do know acrylic and um, oil paintings can craft likeness of that in real reality. I think that is marvelous, marvelous work, and I can. Not at the moment, especially, and can never replicate that. But there's a bit of charm, and um, I don't know, flair. Paintings like these, not my paintings in particular, but paintings similar to these, um, have that have over other paintings a bit of mystique, maybe, when it comes to the cosmos. A spray painting like this. Most people, if you've ever seen them on TikTok, do exclusively planets. And um, some of them do them quite all right. Some of them do them very, very, very poorly. And do need a lot of practice. And I ha used to make planets very, very poorly, just like those people. Um, so perhaps you could call me a hypocrite for saying this. I'm um, just say that they kind of suck. But I sucked. So I, I don't think it's a bit of a contradiction, but I used to suck, just like they did, in a similar way, even. So to a point, I think I have some rights over that. But we all start somewhere, do we not? It is because of experimentation. And... Um, a lot of practicing that got me to this point and more and more I plan to do until I get to a point further in the future that I do hope to create very realistic likeness of nature. That is my goal, uh, among other things. If you want to, no, the real hope of Shane's spray painting is to become the best in my field. In spray painting, that is. Though this is not by far what I think will become my career 
anytime soon. That is reserved for the craft of welding, the trade, which I think is a bit more viable than painting with spray paint or painting in general, unfortunately. This is a bit too wet, so I'll hold off on that. Uh, so yeah, what was I talking about? Oh yes, I want I wish to be the best in my field in spray painting. Um, so that road is long and um, easier than you think, unfortunately, as there's not a lot of competition. But that competition is very strong, very very strong, stronger than I am. Most of them, or well, the vast majority, are from Europe. Uh, a place where spray painting is a very common form of art. So it's more practical that they will be more adept at it than I am. You know, I had to put a lot of time in this, and of course money, to be as good as they are. And perhaps they did the exact same thing. Maybe we're not so different. Uh, but like I was talking about earlier, the people who on TikTok or Instagram only do Janet, uh, the thing that really ticks me off about those people is that they never r really change in their videos. They do the Janets and then that is it. And they change in their theme of color and Janet, but that is all. They do not venture out into if they have a comfort comfort zone, uh, zone or not, they do not venture at all to any place that may um, provide to them any wealth of knowledge that will make them even better, uh, even better of a painter. They do not wish to change. That is what really gets me irked, uh, to put it simply, uh, for nicer terms, of course. <coughs> I don't know what I'd be doing if I stayed in the same type of spray painting over and over and over again. It is simple and safe, but never fulfilling. Perhaps for them it is, as they have a lot of views. And no, this is not stemming of jealousy or views. I understand why people like those people, and I understand fully. To a fault, I am like them. It's very flashy. That's what they make up in. They are crowd pleasers, not in their art, but in their showmanship. Okay, now that I have this done, the outline, I am going to brush this off a little bit, and then make a little bit of lines here to blend in even further. Have little outcrops of rock, similar to uh, in my Massif de Estrel painting, Mountains of Estrel. I might change uh, the title of that if I haven't already, as uh, some people have no idea what that means, which is fine. It just means the Mountains of Estrel, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, it's a French word and mountain range in the southern of France, uh, uh, coast of France. There's little uh, hills with the red mountain tips on them. It's a bit more than that, but that's the simplification of it. Now I'm going to finish this up. Any gaps in a way to tint places I will cover up very lightly as too much pressure will reopen that wound.
catching up. Hmm. I'll keep that in. That's fine. Now let's see what it looks like now. Okay. Now, how are we doing on time? Which was very important. 45 minutes. Uh oh. Spaghettios. Not good. Not good. Oh, well, I already passed that point. Um. Yeah, I'm going to make this a little bit time lapse. Sorry, I'm just going to have to do that. I, I can't export a video that big. So I'm going to make, make a new clip. There's going to be a bit of a time lapse. This might be a little break. That I'll just finish the mountains. It'll be the exact same as I was doing earlier. So yeah, enjoy the time lapse. The impromptu time lapse. Now that the mountain range is done, this will conclude today's uh, tutorial video of how to do landscape, or well, a little bit of landscape and mountains. I hope today was informative, entertaining, and um, that you enjoyed most of all, or learned something, or just enjoyed your time, whatever the reason uh, may be, for whatever reason. Now, there's one last thing I would like to show you all, and that would be the neon. I believe I showed you for the, uh, the space one alongside the planet, but I think you all deserve how the mountains look. So I will give you that time here. If the light would work on me. Oh, this would work. Now it's a bit dim, and on my phone, it looks more yellow than it actually is. It's just, if you imagine hot orange, that is the color to the naked eye. The mountains are a bit more pink, I guess you could say. But they still glow regardless, though faintly. <clears throat> now we'll turn the light back on give me a moment okay i think i did a pretty well enough job with the mountains i will bring up the sketch once more this is the sketch so i want to count the mountains one two three four five six seven eight nine what is that one two three 
I did it to the T. That's good. So nine in total, nine on the pin. I didn't think I would do that, but I managed to do just that. Yeah, I think I did the alignment a bit better. The form of these three mountains is a bit too samey, but that's fine. I think I did a good switch over. There's a good switch over here. Uh, maybe a bit more drastic, but that's fine. They're mountains nonetheless, and they blend into the ground. And um, yeah, pretty proud of it. I think I did good. Next video will be at the crater itself, and I might add some trees to go along with it. But that depends on how much time we have, because the trees will go after the crater. But that is all the time we have for today's tutorial video. Again, I do hope that you enjoyed today's lesson in mountain and basic landscaping. Uh, in spray painting, anyway. Um, again, I hope you all enjoyed and learned something from me. If you have, or if you wish that I taught you something that I forgot or said that I forgot, do please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any criticism, criticisms or overall compliments, I would equally enjoy those comments as well. Or any other, for that matter. The comments mean the most. As I get face-to-face, um, -face, um, how, how do you say, um, interaction with the people who watch my videos. It really does help me. And I know the audience that I am um, making these videos for. Um, so if you take a little bit of your time to go into that comment section and voice your opinion, whatever that may be, it is greatly appreciated and I'll try my best to reply to you all. Uh, with that out of the way, I bid you all farewell and good night. As I turn off the camera, I hope to see you on another one of my painting videos, whichever the one that may be. And once again, I hope you all enjoyed today's painting session. And I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your night. Goodbye.